Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer, and we're returning to a Let's Play of War in the East, where we're playing as the Germans in Operation Typhoons in the uh, offensive on Moscow. We've conquered Moscow, actually, uh, kind of surprisingly, actually, um, and we are now trying to defend it. We are trying to hold out against this massive attack here uh, by the Soviets that is developing in our very northern, uh, north, well, even, even northwestern sector over here. And we are trying to protect the rail line going to Moscow, even though this is only one of two rail lines. Uh, but it would be good to just keep this going. Um, on the other hand, I'm slightly concerned about the situation here further in the west in this type of marshes. This is not the Pripyat marshes. The Pripyat marshes are down there. Not exactly sure, sure how these are called, but yeah, there you go. So the situation here is a little bit untenable. We have withdrawn our forces a little bit. We have tried to get over here um, and try to encircle one of the elites of his corps here, the First Guard Cavalry Corps. So maybe that's going to help be helpful. We also try to pin in these guys down there, which didn't quite work, unfortunately. Um, so that is a little bit unfortunate that we didn't quite get um, to encircle these guys completely. I mean, we have now control of all of these hexes, but I suppose that they will move in here and potentially, uh, well, pre prevent us from getting anywhere there. So that is a little bit unfortunate. One thing that we could do, though, is try to do a bombing raid over here. And I think that would be not a bad idea. So... Yeah, these guys haven't have barely flown at all. So you know what? I wanna send all of these guys here. Why, why are we not using these guys here? Can we not use them? Let's do a massive bombing raid here with a couple of dive bombers, tactical bombers, and pretty much all of that, um, and just try to get them. So we are using 120 bombers, and we are killing about real well, nearly 300 men here, um, including 25 artillery, 26 artillery pieces. So. Yeah, that was that is fairly good um, from my point of view, and I think we have reduced their combat ability at least slightly. You know what? Let's just repeat this attack because I just want to make sure that we are doing all that we can over there. I think we can send in a couple of level bombers as well, even though they have flown, of course, a little bit already. Uh, but yeah, so not quite as many aircraft in. Wolf this time only 89 bombers consequently about only 150 people dead but also we are seeing that uh, there are 18 Russian aircraft coming in and they have lost three of these fighters uh, whereas we only lost a single bomber here so yeah I'm fairly happy with that result and I think that um, was a good bombing raid over there we could also likewise potentially attack these guys up here and um, send up a couple of Let's use these dive bombers here. They are in range, so I suppose we can just try to bring them in. I do probably want to use a couple of other fighters here that are ready and that haven't really flown quite as much. We can use these level bombs. They haven't flown. So I think that's great. And all in all, you know what? Let's take the Yakshwadu 51 there. And we're going to launch a bombing raid here with all of these guys. We're mustering 68 bombers. We are killing about 100 men. 10 artillery pieces. That's not great, but it's not bad either. So, you know what? Let's do another one over here. And just pretty much everyone go in. And I don't think we need really to consider any other place. So, yeah. Let's simply use everyone. 81 bombers. 150 men that eight uh, bombers. And three uh, fighting vehicles. So, yeah. I think that's great. What was it? This always six or was it eight? I don't quite remember. But looks to me like this is going fairly well. And we have done some damage there, so um, that I can appreciate and that I think is, is useful for us. Right, other than that, there's not much we can do over here. We could, of course, bomb a couple of these headquarter units. They are not really the biggest of the biggest importance to me. If there was an extremely high concentration, we could think about bombing them, but for now that just doesn't seem viable. Could try to do a little bit over there, but that's not going to be extremely useful. So, yeah, I think we are going to hand it over towards the Soviets now and just see what they are going to do. So, yeah, let's end our turn and see what the Soviets are going to do, especially down here uh, with the with the uh, people that we sort of encircle there. And, of course, with Rishev. Rishev here is one of our anchor stones uh, for the line that's surrounding to Moscow, and that we definitely want to keep. Ooh, uh, let me just briefly check what's going on here because they are resupp they are supplying some of the partisans that are active in our territory um, They are sending some supplies over there. 
unfortunately, we are not really using um, any of our night fighter aircrafts. A couple of them I did just set up and, and hope that they would be a little bit more active in intercepting these night supplies for partisans. Doesn't look like they were active this time. Maybe we're going to see them next time. Right, so here we go. Soviets are moving. Um, Soviets are doing some recon missions, reconnaissance missions with their aircraft. That's basically to be expected. Nothing too bad to see here. Yeah, we are. Probably they're losing a couple of aircraft there, but it's not the biggest deal. Let's pause here for a second. So they are attacking over here south of Kaluga, so sort of in the vicinity where we're doing this encirclement. They're not putting quite as enough men here, I think. We have got about 11,000 men defending against their 26,000, but it's not exactly across a river, but at least we are doing a couple of good things over here. And I think, just look at how many artillery pieces they are committing to that. That's, that's hefty. And they do have single division two rifle brigade, so that's that's relatively big. We only have a single division, but uh, no, we are being pushed back over here. No, oh, unfortunate. But not the worst. I mean, if they are taking this way, then they're not attacking any other way, and that is great to great to see, actually. Curiously enough, they seem to be pushing further into into this field over here instead of trying to capture this area here, at least for now. So they're attacking with three divisions. With all of these three divisions, they are further attacking. Um, across the river there, so that's fascinating actually. We are of course retreating, but we are causing a lot of damage over here, you can see. We are, we've killed about 1,000, like f nearly 1,500 men uh, at a loss of 100 to our own, so that is a good ratio. But here's the, expect uh, here's the attack that we sort of expected. So they are trying to bail out their unit, but we've got a panzer and a motorized division here with a couple of uh, committed Support squadrons, well, they only have a single division, so they're actually fewer than us, and consequently, consequently, uh, this attack is not really going that well for them. 1,200, uh, 1,400 men lost 18 artillery pieces, whereas only 100 people lost, and only the, these are only wounded uh, on our side, so yeah, clear victory here. Uh, but that might not be the last attack, they might push on stronger here. Let's see what's going on over here. Ooh, interesting attack, interesting. Um, so they are attacking into Reshev again. So this is uh, the area that we are trying to defend. This is a large town here on the other side of this bank, uh, but we want to keep this because this allows this railway line here to go uninterrupted. And this is a massive attack. They are attacking with 67,000 men, uh, whereas we only have 4,500, uh, so, sorry, 45 uh, defending. So. They do have a significant advantage here. We are losing nearly 150 men. They are losing 2,500 men. And they are also supporting this attack with a couple of uh, fighters and bombers. They are losing two fighters, two bombers. We are losing a single bomber. Um, and again, we can see just the amount of stuff that they are supporting. That they are sending in here as a support. So light rocket, light rocket, gun, gun, rocket. And that's a, that's a lot of troops that they are committing there. Whereas we only have three def three defending squadrons, but we do get a couple of gun battalions, howitzer battalions, Stooks. Stooks, I have kept them in. I'm not sure whether that's that useful in the city. Uh, a lot of pioneers, which are, I think, very useful in the city. Uh, whereas these guys probably don't have that many pioneers. No, just only two of these. So, yeah, still it looks like and um, this is going to be a win for us. So basically similar combat strength over here. So I think that means we are not withdrawing, but I'm not too sure. Come on. No, no. Oh, barely. Just barely. We've been barely defeated over here and we were forced to retreat. Oh. And this is, and we're losing 400 men. And they're losing 2,600 because we have been thrown back. Oh man, that's not good. Of course, they're also attacking our flanks here. And they will probably very likely win here. Um, flanks, of course, were not that well defended. So, yeah, I think that's not to be... There's no big surprise over there. No, there we are holding out. Well... That's nice because I think it prevents them maybe from moving in. We'll have to see. Attacks a little bit further east. Here we are not really that uh, surprised to be losing and being pushed back. Still a relatively decent uh, exchange rate at, at 150 men to about 800. 
just barely sufficient, I would say. Oh, what's going on over there in the back? I don't know. A couple of their troops being interdicted by our fighters and bombers. That's nice to see. Uh, they're losing a couple of men there, but it's not a big deal, really. Ooh, another attack up over here. Where we are holding out very significantly. So they are taking our Panzer Division with a cavalry corps supported by a couple of uh, sappers. They're losing a fighter down here and they're losing more than a thousand men. We're losing 90. So yeah, I like these types of defenses. Over here, it's not quite as good. No, well, we're losing 30. They're losing about 800 again. So yeah, good, good ratio there. Probably again rel relatively well. 80 against uh, 1,100. Yeah. The Russians are are suffering in these attacks an enormous amount of damage in their in their personnel. And I mean, Russia does have a lot of troops. But this is, is not to be underestimated. Ooh, interesting. They are taking one of our fortified zones over here with 11,000 men. So hopefully that's not going to fall because that would mean the fortified zone itself would collapse. Uh, and basically that would get back to the... Nope, we are holding out, so that's nice. And again, about 800 men lost. Mostly due to the river defense, I would think. And again, we are holding out, so 600 men lost against 30. Still good ratio over here. It's actually nice that they are taking it to there, not anywhere else. Uh, specifically that they're not trying to bail these guys out. Another attack over here that doesn't seem to go that well for them, but it's it's interesting to see their persistence. So uh, we've got a couple of Stooks, so basically guns, armored guns. Um, they are taking with rifles, howitzers, and artillery. Yeah, and they are losing, basically. Not a big deal there. Right, over here, this is a little bit more interesting, I find. So we are in the forest over here with the infantry division, supported by a couple of other things. And we've got one, two divisions, plus the brigade, and actually some ski troops attacking. Slight reduction in the fort level, but yeah, we really need better forts there. Right, another big attack over here, um, close to Orel, on the northern banks of Orel, with 21,000 men on their side, whereas we have... How come we have so much stuff? Okay, and some of our things here, so this is a fortified zone, yeah, and, and a couple of support battalions, including Stooks, so I think, yeah, that's, that's going very well for us here, again, 1,500 men also lost. That's all. Ooh, a little bit more threatening down here. So we've withdrawn our forces here a little bit, uh, but we are coming under very harsh attack over here by 19,000 men. Cavalry Corps and the Rifle Division. Uh, we are still getting a relatively favorable exchange rate over here uh, in between our troops, but are we being pushed back? No, we are holding out, so that's nice to see at the very least. We do have some ground to give. We don't really need to be too scared of um, of holding them back and another 500 men lost on their side quite a bloody turn here at this time around also over here this is nice to see that they're actually holding out there quite nicely because this would be a little bit uh, more annoying to lose because this is sort of centering our line here in between these various rivers um, and it's nice to see that they are defending well over there um, even against the majority of their troops 40 fighters on our side Four fighters lost on their side, so that's nice. Were they modern fighters, I wonder? Might be. Hurricanes, Yucks, yeah, yeah. They, they did have quite a lot of stuff in there. And again, we're losing 30 men. They're losing, like, 2,000 nearly. Rounded up there a little bit, but you know what I mean. Ooh, interesting also to see that they are delivering cargo here. Uh, very far away, actually. Would be nice if we were intercepting these runs, really. I would really like to shoot down a couple of IL fours. And there's the movement of their troops. So let's see whether they moved anyone in the gaps. Um, or whether we do have some... Some... Oh, yeah. Just hope that this is not too loud. But yeah, I think this is actually the last turn. I, I didn't quite realize that. But yeah, so, uh, you know, we're watching... The... This is true, it was only 50 turn, turns in Amarin. To me, this looks like... We might be in luck over here because this to me looks like a lot of German troops looking in, peering into these Soviet tanks and that might mean we have maybe achieved a victory. We've achieved a minor victory. Well thanks game, I only conquered Moscow. 
So let's look at the victory points over here. We've got 2,850. Four of the Soviets have 2,200. Most of the Soviets have most of the Soviet points are due to Reshev. Ha! Because we we just barely lost that. It was it was such a such a close fight here, and that was being fought there in the end. So. It's a little bit disappointing that we lost that. Um, otherwise, I think this might have been the more significantly significant win over here. Uh, on the other hand, on our side, we did conquer Moscow. All of these points over here, and, and that was truly extraordinarily useful for us. So yeah, these these points here, brilliant. That that gave us a lot of points uh, that definitely came in handy over here. If we had not conquered Moscow when we did, we would we would be losing here. Um, so yeah, kind of nice to see that. Uh, Orel, again, relatively well, I think, that we held for a long, long term. Um, Reshev is a little bit disappointing, honestly. They, this would have been a swing um, of like 400, 550 points at the very least. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I don't. I think we had never had truly any chance of, of conquering Kal uh, Kalilin or Tula. So for these, I'm not too, too concerned. Um, on the other hand, what else did they have? A couple of things that I think we'd never really stood any chance of conquering. What is interesting to see is that even though we have killed, actively killed, one or killed or conquered 1.2 million Russians, we are still getting less points than they are getting for the 200,000 that we lost. So that is sort of the disparity that you have to fight against. Um, their losses are only weighted by 20%, our losses are weighted by 100%. So yeah, that's that's still relatively hefty. Interesting to see that we have still destroyed more of their guns than they have destroyed on our side, even with that multiplicator of 5, so we have more points for their guns uh, destroyed. In terms of aircraft, the same. Uh, we've shot down 800, we only lost 80, so that is nice. And in terms of tanks, there it's a little bit close, I would, I would say, so 860 or so on our side against 4,000 tanks destroyed on their side. Um, and what I think doesn't quite show is a lot of these things here uh, were captured actually from, from our side, so that would have been extremely useful. Nevertheless, access victory point advantage uh, up to 1.3 to 1. So yeah, all in all, a decent victory for us. Um, let's briefly look at the map over here to, to just sort of revisit the most important things. Um, I think we would have been able to destroy these guys over here. Can we actually still act? I don't think we can, but it would be somewhat interesting. No, you all have zero movement points, don't you? No, why do you have zero movement points? Interesting. So if we were to attack over here, can we? No, I think we cannot. Okay. Nevertheless, so these guys here would have been, we'd be able to uh, kill three rifle divisions. How did they get all of these points for Reshev? They are not technically... It doesn't technically belong to them. Well, it's a little bit weird because some of these areas are clearly occupied by them, but they're not really capable of defending them. And um, let's briefly go through that from the southern end over here. So apparently the cavalry corps here did cross the river, so that would have been relatively bad for us. Um, could have come up here in behind us. So we'd probably have shifted uh, more troops down here to deal with these guys so that they're not running, running quite as rampant in behind our lines. Over here this did hold out fairly well. Uh, these guys here did fight off very bravely against these Russians here. So they are a little bit down I think in the TOE probably. Yeah they are a little bit up over here. Very successful defense on, on this gentleman over there. So that's very nice to see. All of this line did basically hold out relatively well. Here I think we would have needed to do something, but we could have just brought these guys here across the river, maybe put them into the forest, and I think that was it would have held these guys off uh, for sufficient time here to finish off these guys up here, and then bring more troops down there, or just try to, try to encircle them a little bit more. What have we got over here? So that's a rifle division and tank brigade. Potentially might have been useful to clear these guys up. Um, and up over here, there's very little in terms of what the Russians can put up. So there's there's a huge gap over there. Um, and just just east of Moscow, I would not really consider this a threat. And Moscow itself has been extremely well built up. So 
um, including some very heavy anti air guns as you can see in these units so that's pretty nice this uh, call has successfully retreated so that is interesting to see these guys over here have certainly managed to cross the river uh, but I think if we had put up some forces here into these woods and all this town I think we would have held them up for a very long time there actually um, this here again is a little bit unfortunate I think we would have tried to move as many troops as possible back into Rishev oh now this is interesting to see that that yeah Rishev did move but they didn't manage to truly properly occupy it it was only in technically in their position but not actually guarded so yeah we would probably have to have to conquer that other than that we would have pretty much um, been thrown to a fighting retreat over here which I think would have become increasingly difficult and we'd have to pull up more troops against here because just look at the amount of troops that they have got we'd be forced to forced to withdraw basically there's no way how you could hold up against that many troops it's just extraordinary uh, what they do have over here if we do look at the forces in the entirety we do, do see that the Russians had 1.6 million in the end uh, whereas we only had 1.4 so big advantage there uh, significant advantage in guns as well we only had 14,000 they had about 50 percent more very significant advantage in gun in armored vehicles so about 2,400 on our side um, near well, not quite as double as much but maybe 70 more 70 percent or more than than us um, relatively similar size here on the Air Force so that I think uh, was was relatively okay all in all, honestly, for me, a very enjoyable scenario. It was it was extraordinary to see the uh, early the early encirclements where we where we fought off the Russians and did just these huge double pincer movements, uh, coming around on both sides of uh, of some forces, eliminating them um, after a little while, and then trying to push on, uh, outrunning our supply lines, being very hardly brought down by winter, fighting a gr to grinding halt um, north of Moscow and south of Moscow. Um, and then facing this huge, huge offensive here um, that we, I think, relatively managed to contain relatively well. Um, and fighting in Rishev probably would have gone on for a little while there uh, with a little bit of back and forth fighting really across uh, the city there. So, again, interesting there. Um, I think we got lucky a little bit in, in Moscow that they did leave that a little bit too unguarded. Uh, they did, of course, have fortified zones. They never let, let left it truly unguarded. Uh, but with a comparatively small force and we were able to exploit that a little and uh, just push them out there so yeah very happy to see that so do let me know whether you'd like to see more of this little uh, game uh, which i think is extremely interesting and just so so detailed um, on this channel and i'll be looking into whether we are doing a full campaign i also got gary grixby's war in the west uh, and the war in the pacific so maybe gonna shift over to these games but yeah this one also to me a very nice experience probably gonna come back to that let me know what you think and with that i say do leave a like and all of that and i see you guys around goodbye